Hello everyone and welcome back to Cobain History. In today's video we will have a look at some of the theories as to how viruses evolved and how they are related to living cellular life. Studies reveal that there is a link to viruses throughout all the three domains of life, so meaning bacteria, archaea and eukaryotes, as we have seen in a previous episode. So this connection with all the three domains of life suggests that viruses predate the diversification of the lost universal common ancestor. There are seven different types of viruses, but since they don't fossilize, it is hard to know which groups evolved first. But these different groups probably emerged throughout the different stages of evolution, alongside the living organisms, the cells of which viruses of course need to hijack in order to replicate themselves. And since we don't have fossil evidence of viruses, there are quite a few different theories that have sprung up to try and explain how viruses evolved. The first three theories that we will go over today are more of a classical view, and the last two I will cover are a bit more recent. So the first one we will cover is the virus first hypothesis. This hypothesis states that viruses evolved first from complex molecules of proteins and nucleic acid. And these viruses contributed to the emergence of cellular life. This hypothesis is dismissed by some because the viruses we know today need host cells in order to replicate. The second hypothesis is the reduction hypothesis, also known as the degeneracy hypothesis. Important to know for this hypothesis is that viruses are very small, a lot smaller than even the smallest living cells but this hypothesis states that viruses were once small parasitic cells that parasitized larger cells. This theory is supported by large parasitic viruses that have similar DNA to small parasitic cells. But even though their genetic material might be similar, these giant viruses do not resemble living cellular parasites in any way. They don't even resemble the smallest of them which they supposedly evolved from. The next hypothesis is the escape hypothesis, or also known as the vagrancy hypothesis. This one states that viruses evolved from bits of DNA or RNA that escaped from the genes of living cells. However, this does not explain the complex structures such as capsids as well as other viral structures that are unique to viruses and are not seen in living organisms. So those were the three classical theories. Now we will go over the two new theories that have arisen over recent years. This one is called the coevolution hypothesis, also known as the bubble theory. At the beginning there was a community of early replicons, which are pieces of genetic info capable of self-replication. The food sources which were present in this early environment also released lipid-like molecules which could assemble into vesicles. The replicons near the food source could be enclosed by these vesicles, but the replicons further away did not come in contact with these free lipid-like molecules but only came in contact with the already formed vesicles. So as we can see, the replicons went down two different paths, according to their environment. The ones close to the food source became enclosed by these vesicles, as they formed from the lipid-like molecules, these became living cells. And the others, further away from the food source, found a way to enter these already formed cells, using them to multiply and then leaving the cell in search for the next one. So these gave rise to viruses. The last hypothesis we will take a look at is the chimeric origins hypothesis. According to this hypothesis, the replication modules of viruses originated from the primordial genetic pool. So these were present in the ancestral viruses, but throughout the long course of their subsequent evolution, many displacements of genes occurred while they were reproducing inside the host cells. This resulted in some genes from their host cells 
being acquired in the genetic material of the viruses. Some of these genes were responsible for encoding major proteins that had a diverse range of applications in their host cells. But throughout virus evolutions, the viruses started to use these structural proteins to create their own structures. And that's how the molecular structures such as the capsids, which are unique to viruses, appeared. So this new hypothesis combines features from earlier ones, such as the virus first and the escape hypothesis, which we talked about earlier. So that was it for this video about virus evolution. If you're interested in evolutionary history, you can find a link to my Tree of Life playlist on screen right now. Or if you're interested in history as a whole, you can check out my channel to find a wider variety of historical topics.